Hi, and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. Not sure about you, but last year I was sitting in way too many Teams meetings. So this year when I was digging into my Aura Ring health scores, I was just curious seeing if there is any way to get that calendar information into my uh, notebooks and then uh, any way to kind of correlate or compare it and see if there is anything interesting there. So I decided to make a video and this will contain some practical tips and tricks on the journey that I made. I hope that will be useful for you. So let's get started. As always, uh, this uh, Jupyter Notebook that I'm going through is now in my GitHub repository and the link is in the description section. Likewise, uh, below this video there are those buttons, so give me some more data points and click the like button, click that subscribe button if you like the content on this channel. Uh, feel free to drop some comment in the feedback section, ask questions, give me some extra advice if you see something that could be done better. And also feel free to share the link if anybody else should be seeing the video. But you can go to the GitHub repository and grab all of my code and just start playing it uh, with it yourself, if you like. I did not include my calendar information this time. Uh, it's not extremely sensitive, but still um, I, I just included a little taste or sample of that. Idea is that you would grab your own calendar information. So prerequisite for this video would mostly be um, having some kind of calendar information available. And uh, to be more specific, we are dealing with ICS calendar format. But um, I exported ICS format, and ICS is pretty unfriendly format, as you can see. So it's not suitable for Pandas data frame as it is. So what we are then going to do uh, is the first cell here. So I have installed ICS library. Uh, ICS is a great way to handle ICS files. Duh! So a pip install ICS is the prerequisite. Having the ICS file is another one. And when you have both, uh, then you can run the code. What I'm doing here is grabbing from the local file, grabbing the calendar, and then it parses things into a list of events. And then I'm doing a little bit of massaging on top of that. Um, <clears throat> so I'm grabbing the event name, uh, begin date, and duration seconds, converting to hours, and creating a dict. So I end up with a list of dictionaries here. Let's run this control enter. So it sits there for a while. There's rather a lot of events, and then I have them loaded. Once you have that, it's extremely easy to grab it into Pandas data frame. And then I'm doing some tricks that you might have seen in my previous videos already. So it makes sense to grab that uh, begin moment and convert it from a string to a date, because then we have a lot more things we can do with it. So that's what I'm doing. Then I'm filtering based on some fields just to get a sample of good data. So one, one of the things I'm filtering, I don't include future data. It might uh, somehow twist my, my anal analysis uh, phases. So I'm, I'm filtering in only the data that's before, um, before or today. And then I'm uh, all only including busy events, dropping the tentative events. And then I'm only including events where the duration is uh, sensible. I noticed there was a few anomalies, so I'm trying to avoid those. Now, uh, there is one more thing to say about this one. So today we are not going to find very meaningful correlation, sadly. I'm mostly uh, showing you with an example how you can do this. Um, in my case, my last year's calendar is unfortunately not available for me anymore. The events in this calendar uh, are just a fraction of them all. So it's not reliable data. Uh, also for this year where the events are reliable, things have started uh, slowly after New Year, so there's not so many meetings, which makes me very happy, but the data is not extremely good. So I could filter out some of the events, but then that would leave only, only such insignificant amount of them that I choose not to do that. But anyways, I have loaded the file. Now let's uh, create the data frame, like so. And as you can see, uh, now I have things here. We have busy events, they are all busy. Uh, we have a date and then we have duration and there might be multiple events for a day, which brings us to the, I think, the most interesting part of this little video. Don't leave after that, but still 
I think this is the beef here. So um, <clears throat> I'm grabbing the calendar and uh, I want to get some statistics so I can compare them. The questions I'm asking is uh, how many meetings did I have this day? And then how, how much time of that day I was spending in the meetings? So what I'm doing is um, data frame group by begin. So group by the begin date. And uh, then I'm taking the duration hours and calculating some aggregations. This is, by the way, the latest Panda style. Earlier versions used a little bit different syntax, but this is kind of a good syntax to use right now. So I'm calculating some of those and count of those. And then <clears throat> I'm re-indexing based on the begin or the date. So the result that I'm getting is something like this one. And now we are down to 78 events. We, earlier we had 143 entries. But now I only have one for each day, so I have 78 days worth of stuff here, starting from uh, January 2021. And as I said, uh, only fraction, only fraction of things here, so not really representing good data. But it's a good sample anyways. Next step, not going to explain this, uh, this is loading the Aura Ring uh, health data, so I can play with it a little bit. Um, you don't need to load Aura. Uh, you can get Garmin <clears throat> or some some other um, kind of metrics you want to compare your meetings against. Uh, if you want to see the Aura things, I have covered these in my earlier videos, so please go there, uh, check it out, you get the full explanation. But uh, let's just say that I load all these into data frame, and then I have a lot of health metrics here available for me. Today I will be concentrating on score. Score is like overall... Uh, 0 to 100 uh, representation of how good was my sleep. So it includes duration and quality. Um, next thing. To combine these, I'm doing a little trick. This is also from my earlier videos, but I'm shifting my calendar data one day onwards. And this is because I'm using, for the Aura data, I, I, I use the bedtime end date for the score. So my calendar events are in the previous day. And then the upcoming sleep is, is for the next day. Uh, this is because this is more reliable. So I, I, it's not going to shift uh, to the previous or next day. So likely as the start of the sleep period. But to kind of cover that one, what I'm doing here is grabbing that calendar and I'm shifting it plus one day. And that causes my calendar and then my, then my uh, scores to be in the same date box. I hope this makes sense. So then I'm able to join these together. And finally, I'm uh, repopulating some not non-numeric fields and also dropping a few fields, cleaning up the data a little bit so we can focus on the essentials. And then I'm going to show you a few things you can do with it. So first thing is rapid plot based on the data. I'm grabbing 60 days worth of data, uh, mostly to make sense in this plot. So uh, it's not going to change too much. As you can see, here is the main problem. We can immediately see that there is way too many meetings. Actually, my life would be beautiful if this was really uh, re real life. But unfortunately, again, just part of the data. Uh, right here on this edge, I'm starting to have good data, but we need to wait a few months. I promise if I, uh, after a few months, I will run the notebook with my real, like, uh, multiple months data. If I find anything interesting, I will make another video. So you will be able to see it on the channel. Subscribe to see that. Um, so uh, what I was doing here, uh, I'm grabbing a little bit of the data just to get a fast sense of what's, what's in the data. And my most simple plot from Pandas data frame is DF plot. Uh, it's a bar chart. I make it a bit larger. And I plot uh, indexes my x-axis, and for the y-axis I'm plotting three columns, score, duration, and meetings. So rapidly few insights out of my uh, Aura scores and, and also my calendar scores. Aura scores seem to be somewhere around 80 a lot. And then I have uh, days where it's quite uh, exceptionally low, near 60. And then the best days, it's uh, nearing the 100, so something above 90, for example. So <clears throat> that's kind of my range here. And I have a, a lot of Aura data available, um, but not so much calendar data. So I will get better things when I have more calendar data available. 
But you can see that <clears throat> calendar, it's on the same scale, but the calendar, some, some durations have been quite large. So there is few heavy durations and then there is few more events that are like a, just a little bit of meetings. So, next thing here. I think scatter, scatter charts and uh, balloon charts are an awesome way, way to visualize things like this. I get a lot of information visualized quite easily. So I'm doing this, this scatter plot and uh, I'm grabbing the data frame index for x-axis, the score for y-axis, so it goes up. So these are really good nights of sleep and these are really horrible nights of sleep. Now I do notice that they're uh, roughly, I, I, see, I see that only really kind of lowest scores included a lot of meetings, which is interesting. But uh, honestly, most of my sleep was around here and uh, most of the kind of uh, meeting heavy days uh, don't seem like, like they would be uh, going a lot lower. So this might be just kind of some anomalies. Still interesting. Definitely worth pursuing more when I have better data. Um, so <clears throat> how did I do this? Well, for the size field, I used meetings count. So how many meetings I had. And then I make sure that it's not zero because most of them are zeros. And then finally I multiply it. So it's more kind of visual here. <clears throat> If I, if I didn't do those little tricks, it would not be looking so good. Uh, it is easier to make sense like so. We could also plot the uh, duration sum. A little bit same observation. They seem to correlate with e each other's as well. But as you can see, I, I get a feeling that might be worth checking more. But then here is perfectly good nights with, uh, it seems like a lot of meetings, the most meetings here and still good night sleep. So, for the final part, I just wanted to show you correlations and one more observation about the data that I would need to fix if I really wanted to make some insights. By the way, did you already notice what error I have if I make a correlation matrix of the data? If you did, write it down in the description section. No cheating, I will, I will reveal that within a minute. But if you already figured it out, let me know in the comment section. So. Um, here, uh, at the bottom, there is a duration and meetings count in, in normal correlation matrix. Very rapid way to find the correlation. And uh, none of the correlations are extremely significant. Well, here is something, but I think it's correlating with its cousin here. So not really good. We have some, some uh, correlations that are stronger. So let's check one out. It's not strong, but it's a little bit uh, stronger than zero at least. So meetings count has some uh, little bit of correlation going on with duration. Duration is how long did I sleep? So naively I could read it that if I have a lot of meetings, it tends to negatively correlate with my sleep length. Now here is the problem. I didn't eliminate my weekend days. From the matrix, so I have health data for all the all days, but I only have uh, meetings during the weekdays. So I'm suspecting that probably my meeting scores will correlate somewhat also with weekday, and weekday will have a more strong correlation with many of the scores as we as we actually figured out in the earlier episode. So to make more sense, I would also need to filter the weekend information here. And not necessarily in the earlier plots, but definitely for the correlation matrix. Do you have some other ideas how to make this better, how to improve this? Uh, again, let me know in the comment section. I happily uh, accept feedback if you have some better ideas as well. Now, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, possibly it gave you opportunity to learn something more, uh, get some inspiration, ideas. I hope you also noticed that it's extremely simple to grab your calendar information and start playing with it. So in earlier episodes, I've shown you how to grab the aura data or something similar. Then you can grab calendar data. There would be a lot more ideas what you could uh, do by combining external data. And as I mentioned, I will do a SQL um, if I find something significant after I have proper data available. Today's data is not that good yet. And I will include a sample taste of the calendar data 
uh, with the GitHub repository, but not my real calendar data. Um, it's still going to just say busy or tentative, but still I don't uh, I don't feel like sharing all of that data. But I will figure it out. I will do the correlations properly. I will filter out the weekends for that. So um, I hope you had a good time. Thank you. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.